Right, we had to drop the rain overnight, which was good because that soil over there was tough as old boots. Um, the plan is, I'm going to put the two raised beds in here today. Um, I've been up and collected some bark to go around the edges. Well, that's a nice bit of progress for the day. I had a whole wheelbarrow full of weeds, dock leaves and nettles out of the beds, out of that area. So I've built the frames and let's get, let's get the last bit done. And just like that, we've got two extra beds. I think it's time for a cup of tea now. I'm exhausted. <sighs> So I've managed to put um, some slabs down temporary here. Uh, I will, you know, I'll level those out in time. I've added some bark past in. It's a bit wet at the moment. And I've dug through all the beds. As you've just seen, the whole wheelbarrow full of dock leaves. I dug, oh my God, I went down about a metre or so. They'll come back, I'm sure. But I'm so glad now that I've got these two extra done. This was supposed to be a project next spring, but I think it's better if I do it now and I'll add a couple of sacks of well-rotted manure on and then just cover them over for the winter. Or my other option is that I'll backfill them now with soil and I'll pop some green manure in. Um, maybe some field beans or something. Right, next job. So I've decided to put the green manure in those two new beds. So basically they're just field beans, well, winter field beans. You just plant them in, sow them in five centimeters deep, eight inches apart, and then you just leave them then over the winter and then chop them back then later on in the spring and all the roots and stuff then have a lot of nitrogen in, in the soil. So that's what we're gonna get on with now. So I gave it a little um, inch of rotted manure on the top as well and then I've added the hoops now and I'll add a net just to keep the, the mice and birds off when they start growing. Right, I've had a good little day today, plodding on as always. Finished. So the field beans are in, they've been hooped and netted. So I'll give them a good water in now. I think we've got rain for a few days. Funny that, isn't it? Now I need it. So, yeah, I'm really pleased with it. All it is, is just a Bosch pump, a sump. You fill it into your barrel, <coughs> put a little Bosch battery in, click him in, lock him down. You've got like a timer setting here, five, 10, 15 minutes. Just press that. And I mean, look at the power of this. You get full access from your barrel to your water. You water all your pump, all your crops. You can even water your greenhouse with it. You can even hose all your paths down. Right, that job's done. I think it's time we head home.
I thought today I'd tackle that one issue I get every year where the panels on the roof, they flex due to the wind and then they pop off and then I end up looking all around the plots looking for my panels or they just blow away and they have to replace them. They're like, they're not cheap, they're like 10, 15 pounds a panel. They have to cut them to size, just not worth a hassle. So I've come up with this idea that if I add one of these, and then I strap it across the front, two of them. I figured it might help me out a little bit. So let's give that a go. So now that job's done, it's a windy day today. A windery? It's a windy day today. I think it's gonna rain soon. So let's get a few jobs done. But the plot, oh, everything's blowing onto my plot. I'm really pleased with these beds. So garlic salad was looking lovely. These are the green manure, the field beans. So it's starting to dry out here now, but then the rain will be back today. Ah, so yes, I'm really pleased that this is now not just a pile of weeds underneath with some plastic on. I've left the plastic, there's no plastic in the middle, but I've left plastic on the sides just to keep the weeds down for a bit, as you can see that it encroaches into the path. So there's basically just like a, a strip of plastic now going across there. That's all there is. Another windy day today. Ah, oh, I've got so many little jobs to do, but it's where to start. Hmm. Oh, if it's not rain, it's wind. It's blowing a gale out there. Right, so I've received a parcel off the generous Terry King. So, um, thank you, Terry. He sent me some red Russian garlic. And he's also sent me some Egyptian walking onions. If you don't know about these, take a look on his channel. I'll put, the di I'll put his channel in the description below. Um, so go take a look. He's got an amazing allotment and he's so resourceful. Like the amount of experience this guy's got, go take a look. So I'm going to pop these in the bed today, the walking uh, Egyptian walking onions. And also find the space for this red Russian garlic. So thanks again, Terry. Thank God I put those straps on when I did. It seems like the wind is, and the rain is beating down hard today. I watched Malcolm Kingswell's video the other day and he made a good point that we can't keep stopping and starting for the rain because it's sure now and it's not going for a long time. So I'm just gonna have to embrace it. So I need to stop being a little princess about this rain and get these jobs done, right. Where am I putting this garlic and where am I putting this onion? Right, so I've decided I'm not going to put the walk-in onions in yet. I'm going to decide to put a bed for it. So I've got some of these old lettuces. I'm going to keep two in. I grow them basically for the chicken over the winter. So. Right, so I've decided to put some of the garlic in this bed. I've already got them in, so it'd be easier for me if I just keep the garlic and leeks together. So this is the stuff, the red Russian off Terry King. Let's have a look how many we've got in here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Right, so I decided to put uh, six of the red Russian of Terry King at the top and five elephant garlic on the bottom that I had that I bought from the garden centre. I got some in, but that was only five bells, so I kind of want to have some that I could cook with next year and also some that I can carry on with my stock. 
so I don't want to be buying out um, garlic every year. So always plant more than you need because some will rot and then some will be eaten and then some will be kept for the following year. So that's a little tip that I've always gone by. Right, I've always, I also mark them out with a bit of wire because then I know where they are. After hiding in my shed for the last 20 minutes, the storm has passed. Like if you haven't got a shed, get a shed. Absolutely get a shed. <sighs> right. Garlic's in. I think I'm, I don't think there's much I need to do today now. I've battened down the hatches. I've secured the pot and shed roof as well because that was a playing up and I was worried the wind was going to go on and blow it off. All this looks okay in here. Uh, don't think I'm going to water it. I'm going to leave it till tomorrow. My potatoes are dying back now. That time of year. So I'll just take the tops off once they die back and then they'll be stored then just like these ones until I need them. Carrots looking grand. Right. I think I'm going to head home. So I've done all the jobs I need to do today. I'm just going to feed, quickly feed the chickens, check they're okay, and then I'll see you guys soon. Thank you, girls. Exhaustful in such so many so bloody hell. Um, I'll pop a description. Bloody hell! Beneath on the description, so you can go and have a look. Can I hike? Oh, oh, it's not rain, it's wind. But I'm going in. <laughs> oh, if it's not wind, it's rain.